I, um, I like to sing that song as it, it reminds me of, uh, of what we once were, what I once was, and what, what my desires were, what my, my wants were and uh, how remarkably they changed the minute we trusted in the Lord Jesus. I was talking with somebody the other day about this and how, how specific it is to different lives in that um, once we see how the old ways or our our desired ways held us with a grip that once the power of the risen Lord set them free, we, we, want, to, we want to apply Christ to all of our lives, to every part of our life, to uh, the many areas that we know and see as wrong. So it comes with, um, with uh, no misunderstanding that this evening we are looking at the clothing of the priests and what they are to put on. And uh, at that point of studying this and looking at all of the ins and outs and the, the different meanings for it and so on, the phrase came to mind put on Christ. Put on Christ. And it's a verse that is found in Romans 13, and I want to read that to you to bring us to an understanding of what it must have been like for these priests, particularly Aaron, to be called of God to put on these, these outer garments as a sign, as a declaration, and for the purpose of ministry. So if you do have your Bibles, turn with me to Romans, because we'll, we'll be flicking in and out of it in some way or another. Romans 13, and we're going to read from verse 11. The day is near, is the heading. And do this, understanding the present time, the hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber, because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in uh, caressing and carousing, sorry, and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension or jealousy. Rather, and here's the key verse 14, rather clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. I read that again. Rather, clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. In a, in a, a great sense, really, that the Christian life is about putting things on. And we read there in Romans 13, 14 that, uh, that Paul instructs, he tells, he, he explains to the believers to, to put on the Lord Jesus, to literally 
cover yourself with them is the, how the Greek interprets that and how it's, it, it cover yourself with the Lord Jesus. In the ESV version it says, and make no provision for flesh. Make no provision for flesh. As I just explained, when we sing a song like we've just sang in Mission Praise, we, we come to realize what we once were like, what, our, what we looked like, what we had on ourselves. And at that point of knowing that Christ is now in us, we want to be more like Him. It's not an easy task sometimes though because of what we're surrounded by and, and particularly Romans, um, it edifies us to that, doesn't it? It says that, I mean, it's a statement of sort of uh, a declaration. It says that your salvation is nearer now than it was when you first believed. That's obvious. But I think what he's getting at is that the Lord's coming is nearer. And whatever you think about that and whatever your understanding of it, whether it's rapture or whether it's um, when we die and we'll be taken to heaven, whichever way you think and illuminate your life about that, it's an eternal promise, isn't it? that salvation will come in the fullness. You see, it's in part at the moment. Our salvation is just, is, is like we have shorts on, like we have a vest on. But when, when, when the full righteousness of God, when His glory covers us on that day, we'll, we'll, we'll shine because we'll be fully clothed in His righteousness. And all the queries and the problems and the the differences that we have now, all those things that bother us and trouble us and and makes us anxious, they'll, they'll all dissolve away in the brightness of His light. I remember when I first heard about that, that salvation is not in full at the moment, I thought, well, what have I got? just got a half measure. I've just got a little measure. And each day and every day, the more I put on Christ, the closer and the more salvation is given. Makes you think, doesn't it, when, when we do something that, that takes us away from that almost like he takes a bit of clothing because we've done something. But forgiveness, grace, mercy, it abounds over all these things. See, what Paul is talking about when he speaks about this in Romans is putting on spiritual clothing And we read this morning in Ephesians 6 how we're not battling against the things of this earth, although they are subsequently relevant to us. But the initial fight, the initial uprooting is a spiritual battle. And it's a one we very often don't see, nor understand, nor think has any relevance in our lives. Especially these days when the gospel message has been so heavily diluted. It doesn't have the same force or, or power to some Christians, to some churches, to some believers, because it's slowly but surely being ebbed away at. And the doctrine that Paul again tells us to keep hold of is being falsified by one way or another that looks good and feels good and sounds good. But it's only temporary. 
compared to the salvation that will come in full measure. So what do we do? Well, Paul tells us clearly there, didn't he? Wake up. Wake up, church. Wake up and see that the darkness can engulf you if you don't put on the armor of light, if you don't put on the clothing of Christ. And if we were to skip back to Exodus, we would see that what God was doing in this case of clothing the priest was He was setting them apart from the other people. He was saying to them, you're not going to wear jeans and a t-shirt like all the other ordinary bods. You are set apart for ministry. And that's what he says. He says, when, when you minister, they will wear this. Aaron must wear this when he ministers. I mean, it seems a bit of a, a setup, doesn't it? He's going to sew bells around the bottom of his tunic. He's going to, you know, he'll be walking in and out like musical rhymes. But it was for a purpose. It was for a purpose that not only he would be aware of what he was doing, but that God was aware that he was ministering, and the people were aware that he was ministering. So, how does this affect us? Well, just like the people were to be set apart and given certain understandings, we see that they are to be given honor, and they're to be given dignity. They're to be anointed and ordained. They're being set apart, clothed, clothed in the things of God, things ordained by God, the things um, anointed by God. I don't know how you think about your salvation or how you think about your life as a Christian, but there's one thing that we should appreciate. We are a holy people set apart as His church. That's no minimalistic thing, is it? When you think about it, you, you now have been called to shine your light in this community. Like Aaron the priest, we are meant to act in a different way. We're to put on the clothes of righteousness. We're to put on the armor of light. And we're to, as it, as it were and says in Exodus here, we're to show everybody the honor and dignity of God. When we see that the priest's garments were to be a lasting ordination. This wasn't something that he just made up on the back of a napkin. This was something that he 
had thought and planned and decided for the, the Israelites from generation to generation. The word consecrate them is a powerful word of, of them being set apart for life. It's something they cannot get out of. And likewise, neither should we. When we make that decision to follow the Lord Jesus, our hearts and our whole lives should be given over to Him. If we turn back to Romans, we find that the writer, Paul, he brings us to a wonderful understanding. And again, it's down to his uh, biblical training, his teaching, his, uh, his theology, whatever you want to call it. He says, so let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. This morning we spoke about the ephod, the ephod and what the significance of the breastplate was. How it would show and he would then take that in and we recognize that Jesus was interceding for us, each and every one of us placed on his heart. But there's a, a downside to it. There's a, an opposite to it. And it brings it to light that in 13, verse 13, let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in this other way. I when, when I read this again, I thought to myself, there was once a time when these things that happen, particularly in the world around us and in, the, in our governments, in our organizations, in all of these places, and of course, some of it came to light this afternoon when I watched the news, how the BBC are enthralled in another scandal. And I thought, you know, there was once upon a time when these things were done in the dark, but now they're so blatantly obvious that we've kind of got used to them. We, we even fear them in some respect where we don't speak out against the sexual immorality that goes on around us. And it's a, it's a very hard course and line to walk. But Paul tells us, quite frankly, that we have to stop these things, that we have to cease from them. And we have to put on the light and put on Christ. The last line there of that verse is, is so clear. And do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Once had a conversation with somebody about, um, and you, you might think this is so, so petty that it doesn't need to be mentioned, but I, I do. I do constantly think about it. I, I once talked to somebody about being tattooed and what it meant for them. And they said, oh, these are the things of old. These were the things in the Bible that, you know, they, they, just, they just meant of this and of that. And it was, it was like they were dismissing the Word of God. I don't know what you think about it yourself. Uh, I've never partook in anything like that myself because I suppose I was brought up a good brethren boy, 
but it was, it was said to me, the Bible says no. So don't do it. And I think, I think the Old Testament is full of the promises of Christ. It's full of the pictures of Him and has how He has in, uh, worked in amongst the people, how He has influenced the many different names within the Bible. And we look at Exodus as we have been doing over the last few months, and we see how it is so inspirational into the New Testament, and how it is the Word of God which is inspired by the Holy Spirit. You know, if we allow little things to creep back in and don't speak out against them, and don't say anything, um, not in a, a hatred way, not in a way of condemning people, but in speaking to the sin, then there comes a point where that darkness just starts to overshadow. Paul, I believe, is bringing back so many of his teachings of Old Testament, and he speaks so many times about the things of old because that was imperative to his life. Like the priests of old, I believe sometimes there is a, a, a physical putting on of things for us. It's putting on spiritual things, but it's acknowledging them as to being crucial to our daily walk in the light of Jesus. I've enjoyed reading through this because some of the, some of the, the terminology, some of the descriptions, they're so precise, they're so exact that they, they make me and have made me realize how slapdash I am in some respects. And I wonder tonight if that's possibly where the Lord is wanting me to raise the standard, to raise a point of view and say, we, we need to address the things that we're allowing to be dressed in. In other words, what things are influencing our lives? What, are being, what things are being put on our lives? Who, who comes first is the conversation I had with somebody the other day in all that we do. Is God second or third or fourth place? Is every think else, take position ahead of Him. Rather, clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus. My, my immediate thought is, On a Sunday, we put on our Sunday clothes. But on a Monday, we're straight back to usual. And we put on any clobber that comes to hand. The world is looking for a people, looking for a God who means more than just one or two days a week. And I believe if we want to see people saved and want to see people in our churches again, that we, we need to step up our mark 
and apply these things to our lives. I say that of myself as well, because very often our own inabilities as leaders comes to the forefront in many matters. These are some of the thoughts that I had of this passage, and uh, I want to finish with Galatians 3.27 that says, For as many of you are, as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. In Romans 13, putting on Christ here is speaking about clothed oneself in a new nature. And that new nature, we cannot take back the old nature, bit by bit by bit. Otherwise, we will be an old self. Amen. We're going to sing our last item of praise in um, Mission Praise 1141. You're the Word of God the Father. From before the world began, every star and every planet has been fashioned by your hand. All creation holds together by the power of your voice. Let the skies declare your glory. Let the land and seas rejoice. of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest on you and remain with you 
and all whom you love and pray for, both this day and forevermore. Amen.